Last month, Microsoft finally came clean and confirmed its plans to release their own family of hardware and software products aimed at conquering the growing world of digital entertainment. The Zune is getting the most buzz, and many critics are actually calling it the iPod killer. But could that really be true? Are the days of the iPod numbered? Can anyone or anything topple the Tower of Apple? Well, turn down the music, take out the earbuds, and turn up the TV, folks, because it's the loop. Joining us via satellite tonight from San Francisco, host of DL.TV, Patrick Norton is here from Redmond, Washington. And MSNBC tech writer Bob Sullivan should probably point out that MSNBC is co-owned by Microsoft. That might play into the uh, discussion just a little bit here. And of course, here in Los Angeles, tech reporter for the radio show Marketplace, Lisa Napoli joins us. Everybody, welcome to The Loop. Thanks. Hi. Patrick, I want to start with you, hey, sir. You're, you're, you're the king of tech here, so uh, i got to get your opinion on this one. <laughs> Apple owns 80% of the market here with their iPod. I mean, should Microsoft, should any company ever ever plan on having any semblance of a chance at taking them away? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm the king of tech, but Microsoft's always been a come-from-behind company, whether you're looking at Internet Explorer or owning the operating system market. They have a ton of cash. And I think they're embarrassed, quite frankly, that Apple has just utterly owned the whole, the iPod space, portable music. It's become the de facto that people think of. You know, and they've, they've, they've made efforts. They've got the DRM, very popular on the movie side, but not as popular on the downloadable audio side. They've tried plays for sure. That was kind of their 2.0 version of it, where they were going to make everything easier for portable players to download music and to interoperate and to work with the paid music services. Now, Lisa, for, let, let, me, let me go to you here, because Microsoft was able to succeed in coming from behind in the past, I think because they were able to leverage the Windows operating system. System. They were able to leverage the chokehold they had on the marketplace. Microsoft really has nothing when it comes to digital music, so do they stand a chance against Apple? I just don't see it. I just don't see it. I know they own the desktop. I know they own the universe. But I think the Zune, which is the most ridiculous name, by the way, would have to be a sex toy and make coffee and maybe be 25 bucks to really have an impact. Just Wait, look. Wait, now, you're, are, you, are you confirming or denying that the Zune does that? Because if so, I might need to pre-order I... right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, let's start the rumor. That would be get get on the blogs. No, it really it really would need to have some sort of really extraordinary capacity, or they'd have to give it away for it to have any right. sort of impact. Well, Bob, I don't I don't think we're going to see Bill Gates handing out zooms on the street anytime soon. But the players said to be one part MySpace, one part our iTunes, one part Xbox. I mean, it, it might make you coffee. It might double as a sex toy. We're not sure, but will that be enough to take the marketplace away from uh, Apple? Well, let me disagree with Lisa right away because you never want your sex toy to also make coffee. <laughs> it's a very important yes. technology. Use a principle. separate spoon to stir, ladies. That's true. That's I right. I can't, that's can't right. stress this enough. <laughs> and I actually think that this is a principle that applies in the tech world. Everybody thinks that they're trying to make a gadget that does everything. But you know what? The gadgets that have made it in the world, simple, elegant, do one thing well. The iPod is the perfect Apple product. It's a combination of cool and technology, which Apple always was. And I think that company actually was founded 20 years ago to make the iPod. And so for Microsoft to be trying to climb this mountain, man, it's a long climb. Patrick, what do you think about that? Can't Microsoft be cool? Can't they do enough market research or fork over enough millions well, to, to come up with their own iridescent cool ear earbuds? Well, it's going to be interesting, right? Because obviously, if you've seen the early pictures of, of what looks like the Toshiba device, it looks like an iPod. They've got a round of, you know, they're, they're trying to confuse the market with a little round spinner if this is the real design that doesn't actually spin, it clicks. If they can have a good interface and they can make it cheap, which is something they can afford to do. Think of all the money they lose on every Xbox they sell. And they want to make it up on the backside somewhere. It's possible. The problem with Microsoft is they have a huge amount of money and the ability to brand things and to tie it into the desktop. And you know what? All they got to do is a few percentage points here, a few percentage points there, and they could probably get 30, 40 percent of the market, which That's would true. definitely hurt Apple. Which would be huge Apple. for a company like them. Yes. Now, Lisa, you know, the people are saying, well, the Zoom's got built-in Wi-Fi here. We can share our tunes, all sorts of cool little features here and there. Why hasn't Apple thought of this stuff? Is it because they don't have to, really, because their their market their products number one on the market? Well, I'm not so sure that that Wi-Fi sharing stuff is is legal. I don't I don't know enough about it to know, except that I know the Zune is supposed to have it. But I think you know the iPod phone is supposed to be released at some point soon. I I just don't get why 
Apple is so much cooler and smarter than everyone else's. I just know that they are. And that's why they have that fat four percent market share in the desktop. Yeah, computer but there, market. there's the cool <laughs> factor. It's the cool factor. And you know what? I agree, Patrick, that maybe, maybe Microsoft could make a dent if they do what they did with Netscape and lock out everybody else. If they locked out iTunes, and I don't know how that could happen, whether well, that could happen. They didn't well, lock out iTunes. Apple locked out iTunes. That's true. Apple was the one that said you're not allowed to play in our sandbox. Box kids, but let's talk about a Apple for is a out Microsofting here. Microsoft in this case. Actually, I think let's, Apple is the one who's created the, the closed system now. And that's true. Now, Bob, Bob a lot of people are it. saying the iPod wouldn't stand a chance, wouldn't have stood of any sort of a chance without iTunes. That the two are go hand in hand. It's the perfect yeah. sy synergy. Uh, of course they do, and this is a consumer product, which is again, it's so different from a piece of hardware. People have these established habits, and it's really hard to change them. But do you now, Bob? Do you trust Microsoft to make a music store that can rival iTunes? It seems like they've tried to launch their own uh, ventures three or four times in the past. Uh, they've failed many times in this realm. So. The thing about Microsoft is it has all that cash. It can afford to fail for a very long time, and there are plenty of good examples of that. But the other thing that Microsoft is running against here is the 80-20 rule. Apple has 80% of the market, and everybody else has 20%. I think Microsoft will probably make a dent in the 20%. It would be very hard for them to make a dent in the 80%. All right, finally, Patrick, I want to go to you here. That, that other 20% of the market, uh, forgetting about the Zoom, forgetting about Microsoft for five seconds here, does anyone else stand a chance against Apple? Uh, everyone else is kind of definitely in second place. I mean, I own four iPods. I love the iPod. It's an amazing device. Um, and the fact that it's tied into the iTunes, it makes it so easy to use. It'll be interesting to see with, you know, Windows Media Player 11. Urge is an amazing music store. I like it a lot better than iTunes as a music store. You know, this may be Microsoft going, you know what, we're going to design the best hardware we can, maybe tie it into the Xbox Live, you know, tie it into the Xbox it could happen. popularity. I, I will admit, I do see a lot of head shaking here on satellites, but, but, but it could happen. There is a possibility. Listen, it's almost a certainty that with Apple's head start in this arena, Microsoft has a lot of catching up to do, but they might be the only ones that can give Apple a run for their money. But that's going to do it for this discussion. Thanks to our guests, Patrick, Bob, and Lisa. Thank you guys for keeping us in the loop. Appreciate it.